Hi, I'm Paris, and if you've been following along with my DIY mold testing adventure since having some leaks in the roof from rain, I am now up to the point where I just received this identification test kit. I can send in samples with this and they will tell me the types of mold that are growing. What I'm going to use as the source for that are these mold check test strips, which in my previous video I put out around the house, let them incubate and saw some mold in a few places. So now I'd like to find out what those molds are. Next step is taking the samples with these little test strips and sending this off to the lab. Let's see how this works. Epic review guys. This DIY mold test, easy mold test is um, about $50 and they don't send you a whole lot. There's instructions in an envelope and then in these plastic containers, are the little adhesive strips, I believe, that they give you three. So you can take three samples of mold and send it in. The reason it's $50 is the analysis that they give you where they will tell you which type of mold you have. There are a number of mold kits I found. This seemed to be the most reasonable because I didn't want to just rely on sending in one sample and that was about $35 anyway. So it seemed like about $50 for three was the most reasonable. If you'd like to find out more about this specific kit, there's a link to it down below the video. So it was $50 for the 10 test papers to find out where mold was growing in the house and how much there was. And then $50 for this test kit with the three samples I get to send them for analysis. Now in my case, I'm in Texas, so there's yay, an extra $24 fee because it has to go to a Texas state certified laboratory for testing. But for most of you, it'll be just the $50 or so that you pay for it on Amazon. So let's see what the instructions say and how these adhesive strips work. You might be curious to see, those of you who've been following along, what happened on these strips. I'm on day eight now, I think. And I showed you at day four. After day five, they're not quite as reliable. Stuff happens. I think all of the um, mold food dries up. But I will show you an update of those when we're going in to get samples. Makes it look easy. I have read over all the paperwork. There is actually a fair amount. You have to fill out a chain of custody form um, with all the specific information about where you are, where the testing was done, the sample numbers and so forth. I think it's more in terms of if there were a lawsuit or something more serious happening in the future. However, they do tell you on the back of this that your testing is just uh, representative of a moment in time and a particular spot. So just because it shows you don't have mold here doesn't mean you don't have mold in your house. Basically, I think don't blame them if it doesn't catch everything because you're just going to take three small surface area samples. So, but I already have the samples I want tested. Now they give you a guide to go through areas you ought to check in your house for visible signs of mold, the smell, that sort of thing. They do also say that when you are collecting your samples that you should wear protective clothing, eye gear, gear uh, mask, possibly even like a full hazmat suit kind of thing, but I'm not going to be doing that. So don't do what you see me doing here. If you are trying this yourself and you're concerned because of probably health issues, you don't wanna be stirring the stuff up and having your face in it. So do as they say, not as I do. Now the clear plastic case here, you're going to put the, the little slip back into and oh, it's like a little slide. Huh. There's a spot on it to write the identifier, the location, or if you're, the code. Well, anyway, whatever will give meaning to you so you know the where and when of when the sample was taken. And then I'm going to peel something off. And then you take it to the surface that you want tested. And with your thumb on the back of it, you press it on pull it back, it's adhesive, and you should see some little granules of discoloration. Anyway, something that you think is the mold, put it back into here, and it goes with the rest of them in the form and gets sent off to them for testing. Okay, I promised you a look at my mold check test sheets on day eight, and the really bad ones here. This was the outside sample up in the attic and in the entryway. As awful as these look, I'm not that worried about it because I think both of them could reflect mold spores blown in simply by um, this one being right by the front door and this one by having the vents up in the attic to allow air in. These are relatively clean. The blue stains and other things can just mean yeast. You don't really worry about those I think as being mold. The three I'm going to have tested are these. The one that one colony that grew on the sheet that was in Jimena's bedroom. The three colonies from Roxana's bedroom and one colony from the master bath. 
Here's the first biofilm. I would call it a slide. It feels just like a slide you put under a microscope, except it is a little bit flexible, so I don't think it's, it's uh, glass, I think it's plastic. Here's where I've labeled Humana's bedroom. Um, and this at portion here on this same side seems to be the collection area between those two black lines. So I thought it was a larger area, like on the back, you were able to press all that against the mold growth, but no, this is what you got to work with. So let me peel this off. I've peeled it off. This part here on the front is sticky. And so I'm going to grab my mold sample here, open this film cover up, and then press this onto that until I see that there are some black grains adhered to here. Then I'm ready to pack this up to send back to them. Remember, do as they say for safety, not as you see me doing here. Okay. Pressing it down against it. Oh, that's kind of slippery, slidey. Hmm, I don't see any black. I'll try again. Hmm, maybe because it's all liquidy. Or maybe it's not lifting it off of this. I can see on the paper here that some lifted off. Let me try to lift it off the paper. I want to see something black on this. I'm not seeing it. I want to scrape some of it and just throw it on here. Maybe if I slide this over it. Surely some is on here, but I can't actually see that. I'm going to have a problem with these others, I'm sure, as well. Okay. Definitely don't do this. There, I've scraped some of it. <laughs> I'll do the thing. Okay, and I don't put this back. There's no cover for it. It simply goes in here and you snap it closed. It's congealed itself into a black thing on there. Good enough. That one's ready to go. I have all three samples. Probably better that you didn't see my collecting of the other two, but I got samples to go. Now I have to fill out my chain of custody form. I need to get a Ziploc bag to put these into, seal that, and then put them in an envelope and send them to this address. I think I'll pick up a bubble wrap kind of envelope to put them into along with this form, along with a check for the additional $24. Then I will wait a few weeks until I get the results and I will be back and show you the results and find out exactly what kind of mold I discovered here in the house. You can keep checking back for that video or you can click that subscribe button down below. You'll get notified when our videos go up. See you on the next review. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he goes shopping, he watches our videos.